threshold question, though. As an analyst, how do you handle the release of a new model like this? Like, how much stock do you put in various benchmarking tests? It's really tough. And it's actually something that I, I, I've i thought a fair bit about. Um, and this is sort of going to be an issue challenge question and reason for optimism for open AI, actually, uh, which I think we're going to get to in a bit, perhaps per our recycled question. Allegedly. There you go. <laughs> Another tease. The reality is, is AI is already so good for so many situations for so many people it's harder and harder to perceive what differences there are. Yeah. Now, there you could argue that that's because you're too stupid, um, which very well may be the case. Um, at some point, AI is like it. it it's easier <laughs> how to put this. If you're if you're smarter than different people, mm -hmm. you can perceive the differences in intelligence. If you're not as smart as other people, they're all just smarter than you. Yeah. And one of the fortunes of, you know, being in Silicon Valley and, and getting to know lots of people, I've definitely, I've talked to people that are definitely much smarter than me, and I'm not sure how much smarter than they are. They're just smarter than me. And I've <laughs> talked to other people that I'm like, I can kind of rank you guys. <laughs> I know sort of who, who's where. So, um, and it, it's, you know, it's sort of an uncomfortable topic, but you just have, you can see down easier than you can see up. Yeah. And one of the challenges with AI is if it's not there yet, it's going to get to the point where it's sort of looking up for everyone. Mm -hmm. And so, like, what's the difference? So it's sort, sort of X, Y, Z. Now, AI also tends to be very spiky. There's some stuff it's just really good at and some stuff that you can kind of tell it's kind of making it up and it will hallucinate much more in particular topic areas or it will just sort of get stuff wrong or you can really see the seams of you're just pulling straight from Reddit and I'm yeah. not sure that, you know, it's sort of aspects to it, but uh, probably the most useful important area for the benchmarking are areas like coding, for example. And the reason is they're verifiable. Mm -hmm. And this is a point that I've been making again and again. Um, uh, Karpathy sort of made out a tweet along similar lines this week where AI is the most interesting at the two ends of the extreme. The one extreme is where there's no right answer. So you're like, this is where hallucination is actually a positive trait. It makes up new stuff. That's actually incredible. Computers yeah. have never done that before. The other extreme is where you can, you know if something is right or wrong. This is why code, I think, has been a huge area because the code has to run. Mm -hmm. like, like it either runs or it doesn't. It compiles or it doesn't. It throws errors or it doesn't. And in areas that are verifiable, not only can you know how good it is, but also you can do reinforcement learning where you can do post training to sort of make the base model even better by running it through a bunch of tests and learning from them and getting sort of be better over time. So what's interesting about these benchmarks is, by the way, the one benchmark Gemini did not come in first in was coding. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Anthropic is still number one. Anthropic figured something out with, like, I think it was 3.5. That was yeah. like blew everyone's mind as far as coding. And it's been a sustainable, persistent lead, uh, which I think is probably surprised. It surprised me probably a bit. I don't know what, what secret sauce there is. And if is, is it going to be figured out sort of uh, eventually? But right. that's a is very positive sign. Point? Yeah. Like I think Anthropic was actually one of the big winners of this week where uh, like the their bread and butter is the one thing that Gemini did not sort of beat at least according to benchmarks yeah they have now, the benchmark problem for now well the other problem is the benchmarks are public now they do their best to keep the questions secret and xyz and and adjust them and that's all that's part of what i pieces. wonder about is like are models just being trained to the benchmarks at this point and how much do we really learn well from sometimes any of explicitly like llama 4 released like this benchmark specific version and it scored super high and yeah. that was a real like I don't understand the people who are critical of people in meta AI being set aside the super intelligence and who they hired. Mm -hmm. If you have a team that is disguising their failure by cheating heads need to roll. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like there's, there's multiple issues going on, not just in the failure, but in the cover up and all those sorts of things. And, you know, Mark Zuckerberg, one of the many reasons he looked like, an, like looked bizarre i think in the interview i did with him last year and 
kind of dumb in the, I think the interview with Dorkish in the same week is he's sitting out there on a spit, trying to defend the fact that he has a team that was cheating on benchmarks to cover up their failure. Like, yeah. like, like that's, that's just not, it's not their failure okay. being effectively a mediocre model. That four wasn't very good. Yeah. yeah. That, that it was, it, it was a sort of, sort of a poor model and they'd sort of gone the right direction with this monolithic sort of approach. And mm-hmm. yeah, it was so the, now there's the funny thing about Google and Gemini. This is not an assertion about Gemini three. All I will say is that, there was a friend I was having a discussion with, and this was a while ago, was, I want to say like six months or so, where they were sort of tongue in cheek characterizing the various sort of AI teams. And yeah. the, the the line about Google is their what their weak there's some of the weaknesses in, in, in the teams. And I think something about Lanthropic was sort of the, the, the goody goody two shoes bit and like, oh, we're so special, blah, blah, blah. Um, the open AI bit, or did they some of the, they reflect their founders. I, I can't remember exactly what it was. I'm so sorry. I don't want to speak for this person <laughs> who I'm not saying because I'm butchering whatever they said. Yeah, I, was the open say, AI I have one, no idea what was trying to be said. Even, right. The open AI fine. one was, uh, uh, you know, the complaint about open AI is it's very, uh, it sort of like kisses up to you all the time. And it was yeah, like, just telling you what you want to hear. Mm-hmm. Right. And saying like, yeah, that's Sam Altman as well. <laughs> like that was sort of the, the funny one as well. Um, but Google was, uh, yeah, Google uh, builds to the benchmark. Like it, it, it's too, that's part of the bureaucratic nature of a large of large company. You get what you measure. Sure, and that's KPIs. what's being built towards. Right. And so it's just interesting that they made this observation to me a while ago. And here we are today, and Gemini's blowing the doors off in terms of benchmarks. But does that actually translate in the real world? I don't know. And it, it, it's really hard. So from my perspective, what I do want to do. Mm-hmm. is use Gemini regularly. Like for like when Grok 4 came out, it was a big leap forward and I used it regularly and then I got sick of using it in the browser on my desktop where I use it the most and yeah. I just feel like it got a little worse. ChatGPT seemed to get a little better. I went back to ChatGPT. This whole not having a good Mac app thing drives me bonkers. Like mm-hmm. it, it just having to go to a browser tab sucks. It do, it doesn't fit how I work. It doesn't have the the tie-ins with with with, with the terminal and and with BB edit that is super important to me that I leverage all the time. I don't understand this is the most important product in the world. Why are you not expending all possible resources to have the best apps? By the way, I can't remember if I said on here, I did on dithering that my, that there's no there is a copilot app, but it doesn't work if you use a business account. Yeah. Turns out there's a separate app that works for a business account that the regular app doesn't tell you about great. And that app <laughs> is literally the web page in a frame. It's worthless. It's, it's like, it might as well not even exist. It, it irritates me that I had to issue unnecessarily a complicated and cumbersome. Perfect. Anyhow. So anyhow, so I do, I do need to use it more. What's yeah. interesting for what it's worth. And this is pure anecdata, which means it's, it's probably not worth anything. There were two, Extended discussions I was having with uh, Chat. I started on ChatGPT. One mm-hmm. was about a networking issue, and one was about uh, turkey preparation. Now, the networking issue, I know a, enough to be dangerous, yeah. but I'm. I wouldn't say I'm an expert. Uh, what I will say is that the ChatGPT answer blew the Gemini answer out of the water. It actually mm. answered the question. It gave specific references, and it said why the answer to the solution that I wanted was probably not a good idea to do. So I have all u- Ubiquity Unify equipment. I wanted to see, can I limit a like the guest network, the bandwidth? And you can do this through quality of service policies, but that's going to kill your overall networking because it, it, it's no longer on a dedicated, like, hardware channel it does doing software your whole thing will be slowed down so it gives me this whole layout yes you can do it this is how but you might not want to do it because of why gemini didn't even list the qos option their option was get completely separate access points for your guest network and put it on a hundred megabit router yeah. uh, or switch it, my, number one bizarre answer number two there was an answer it didn't get so anyhow but whatever Less that comprehensive happens. sure yeah one, that one happens. example i don't want to give one example I was uh, now. I, what I am an expert at, I would like to think, is turkey preparation. <laughs> Great, and uh, you know, I am a big believer in the wet brine approach for turkey preparation. 
Uh, mm. The brine with turkey, people complain that it, that it's dry. Uh, you, I have my own brine uh, for poultry that I think is phenomenal. My chicken, world class. And I've done turkeys in lots of different ways. Done in the oven. I've actually done it on the grill. Worked very, very well. I'm going to do a smoker this year. So. Have you fried a turkey yet? I have not. I don't have a big. I might try that in the future. I'm going to try the smoker this year. That's sort of sort of a new thing. But I know I, I do have the brining process down pretty pat. And mm. I was sort of reviewing like what's the timeline from on from thawing the turkey Look at this. to doing prepping. I love right. it. <laughs> Leaving so no like, stone you, unturned before. No, next week. no, because you got to start early. You, it takes three three or four days to sort of thaw, yep. and then you would brine. And then the key thing is after the brine. You need to leave it uncovered in the refrigerator so the skin dries out so you get crispy skin. Mm. Which ChatGPT covered all that, gave me a good timeline. I'm like, oh, I should put this in Gemini. Gemini skipped the drying out the skin oh, stuff. Oh, boy. Gemini forgot to throw it in the fridge to let oh, the skin dry. Really? I mean, you want to talk about a confidence <laughs> shake? Bail We're talking that about benchmark. Thanksgiving dinner. <laughs> And because it, it started out, it's like, oh, start thawing on Sunday night. I'm like, what? That's way too late. What are you talking about? I go through. It's like, I'm going to pull it out of the brine and throw it straight on this. No, then you're going to get soggy skin. It's, oh. Oh, boy. Wow. Anyhow, uh, nothing Bad to do with probably Sundar. the economic implications <laughs> of uh, AI. Probably totally irrelevant and just bad luck for Gemini. But um, but it speaks to why this is very difficult. Like, yeah. It's mystifying for me as a normie. It's mystifying to know how much stock to put in any of these tests. And every model release is hyped for a week or so in advance. And John Coogan of TBPN, he actually, he compared these releases to iPhone releases where like 10 years ago, there would be mind blowing leaps that would make the whole world stop. And now the improvements are steadier and less sexy than they were a year and a half ago, which isn't to say they don't matter, but vibes wise, it's just sort of a shift as the ecosystem grows up here. Does that resonate with you at all? Well, I think so. And it speaks to a couple factors here. Number one, Google does have the comeback narrative behind them. And yeah. like narratives matter, right? You, that's how you frame this discussion from the beginning. And as a you know longtime professional NBA podcaster, uh, who is one of the biggest proponents of narratives led to mm -hmm. one of your really terrible takes that Russell Westbrook should have been MVP as a six seed <laughs> uh, a few years ago, just because you love the narrative. Uh, yeah. This is a great narrative, right? Yeah. There's also sort of systemic structural reasons why you would expect actually Google to have the best model. They, they are of the most resources. Mm -hmm. They've been working on it the longest. They have this fully integrated stack, which at the beginning, you would expect the integrated player to actually do better. The, the whole theory is by integration, when stuff's not good enough, you can solve a bunch of small problems and do it better. Over time, as you get the iPhone level where everyone finds it boring, it starts right. making more sense to have component pieces and people competing at different levels. We, we had the opposite, like we Google invented the transformer, but then we had open AI running on Azure using NVIDIA, like a v much more modular approach coming in and being in the lead. And so there's a bit where my, even with all my Turkey problems mm -hmm. and my networking issues, my base assumption is that the benchmarks are broadly correct because okay. I would expect Google to eventually get the best model. And if it's now or it's the next one, whatever, I'm not surprised. Interesting.